Bullish Shark Tank is made possible by XML Financial Group. XML Financial Group helps you make investments that align with your lifestyle, freeing you to spend time doing things that matter most. Learn more online at xmlfg.com. This is Maria Antokas, Director of the Entrepreneurship Program at the Bullis School. The program develops leadership skills and confidence in the students' ability to think innovatively as they progress through the future stages of their academic and professional lives. Our goal is for students to develop into active community and business leaders. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the 2021 Bullis Entrepreneurship Symposium. For the past seven months, 32 Bullis seniors have worked tirelessly to form eight unique startups. Each startup was sparked by an idea. Each idea was refined and improved through hundreds of hours of research and development. Throughout the startup journey, a dedicated group of community and faculty mentors provided expertise and guidance to each team of students. These teams will compete to impress three judges with their innovative product or service. Following each business pitch, the panel of judges will ask questions to learn more about the merits of each startup. The competition is intense, and the investment will go to the team most ready to turn their idea into a company. We are just moments away from showcasing and celebrating the efforts of all of these students. Our panel of judges consists of leading innovators and entrepreneurs. Asha Abalasha is founder and CEO of Mason Dixie Foods, the only ready-to-bake clean label frozen biscuit, rolls, and scones brand in the country. Lars Anderson is founding partner of Blue Dot Strategies, a strategic communications consultancy trusted by clients with a mission. And Winslow Marshall, co-founder of Neobytes, a company with a mission to save two things humans can't live without pets and planet earth 32 students eight startups one investment our first pitch features osun a hair care brand with a mission to help you achieve the hair you've always wanted regardless of your hair type osun is a hair care brand that focuses on giving you your healthiest and most stylish hair we know that everyone's hair is a little bit different and has different goals for how they want it to look. Our mission is to help you achieve the dream, the hair you've been dreaming about, regardless of your hair type. Our team consists of me, Cannon Tomlin, Chloe Manos, Alexis Emery, and Niall Tate. The key problem we're striving to solve is the lack of representation and knowledge within the natural slash curly hair community. The lack of knowledge leads to issues of wasting time and money on inaccurate products that further damage their hair. There's also a lack of fully customized subscription hair care packages that cater to every hair type. Our solution, presenting a fully customizable hair care subscription service that not only educates you about your hair, but provides you about natural products that work for every hair type. The entire solution can be delivered to your front door. So what is Osun? Osun is broken into four key components, our website, the quiz, the subscription, and the box. First, our website, osunusa.com, is easy to navigate and built with the natural hair community in mind. 
On our website, we have information about who we are, the brands we are in collaboration with and why we chose them as representatives of our company, styling tips and tutorials on how to use our recommended products to their full potential, and our quiz. Our team has done extensive research to answer why our hair reacts to certain products. Our short and easy quiz on our website asks questions on things such as your curl pattern, hair porosity, hair structure, and most importantly, the customer's goals for their hair. This quiz allows us to gain the information we need to fully understand the customer's hair and goals to then give them the products that work the best for their hair. Osun is a subscription-based company. By doing this, the customer will be able to choose when they receive their products on a monthly or bi-monthly basis. This gives our customers the freedom to try new products, all with the assurance that they work. Finally, using the customer's answers from the quiz, we will then curate a fully customized box of products. Because the box is sent straight to the customer, it eliminates the time-consuming process of going to the hair store and buying products that simply do not work. Our aesthetically pleasing box is designed to feel like a gift to the customer and enhance the Osun experience. Our target customer was formulated from our survey results and general information about the beauty and hair care industry. We found that ethnic groups with naturally curly hair are severely underrepresented. Because of this, our target customer is Black women under the age of 30 who have naturally textured hair and are willing to spend at least $21 a month on beauty items. Our research illustrates the huge market for Osun to thrive. In the U.S., 65% of people have naturally textured or curly hair. This is approximately 200 million people, many of whom are lacking information on how to care for their hair. In 2020 alone, the natural hair market was valued at $9.15 billion and only continues to grow. In the U.S., the average woman spends about $313 on her appearance each month. With Osun, this process will be much more affordable. Finally, Osun is an online business, and the online cosmetic industry grew by 30.5% in 2019. As for our survey results, they do suggest that we are in fact addressing a real problem, with comments from our survey takers expressing issues of hair loss, thinning, and various types of damage because of their use of generic brands and their lack of styling as well as experiences of products being ineffective with their hair type. And many survey takers also commented that they were spending large amounts of money trying to resolve hair issues that they could not identify. As for what these results mean, we saw that 67.2% are willing to spend at least $21 per month, which led us to price our boxes at a starting point of $25. Next, we saw 55.8% rely on a hair professional or experienced stylist for product information and use, showing that survey takers do struggle with, to understand the products and caring and styling for their hair. We also saw that 50% of our survey takers have type 4 curly hair, which is the curliest type of hair, meaning we are addressing the correct majority and focusing on curly hair. With 77.9% below the age of 30, 59.8% Black or African American, and 75.2% female, we were able to identify our possible target customer. As for our competitive advantage, our competitors are exclusive, only focusing on one hair type. And they also typically sell products individually or create custom products, so they do not address the actual care and styling of the hair. They also tend to stay within products of a limited price range, either exclusively high-end or exclusively low-end. Our hair quiz is more specific than our competitors. We also explain our quiz results to our customers so they understand what the results mean, why they need the ingredients they need for their hair goals, and why we're pairing them with the products we've offered. We also offer styling advice because hair care is about more than just the health of the hair. It's about styling too. Osun includes a larger variety of products, including a larger variety in brands, in the hair types these products address, and in the cost of the products. We customize the selection of products for our customers and offer a custom schedule so it's as easy and convenient as possible for our customers to gain access to our products. Our boxes are easily changeable as well because as your hair's health changes over time, so will your goals, and so will we. As for the investment, the majority of our investment will go to getting out our first 400 boxes, with 62.2% going to material cost of goods sold and 8.3% going to shipping. The next 15.6% is labor, which will break down to 10.4% direct labor and 5.2% corporate overhead. The final section of 13.9% will go to selling general and administrative, with the majority of that going to advertising, 10.4%, and rent at 3.5%. As you can see from our profit and loss statement, we will be profitable in our first year. We'll be 
become more profitable as we grow. The price of goods plus shipping is about 70% of total costs. Due to this low overhead and low fixed costs, we can scale very easily, and if revenue is slower than anticipated, we can easily cut costs. The predicted growth for our company is very high. So summer 2021, we plan to implement a rewards program. After every six box you receive from us, you will receive a special gift from our company. By winter 2021, we'll sign industry specialists and expand the number of products offered to help cater to multiple different hair care types. Early 2022, and we expect to expand our website, creating an online form where customers can tell what products work best for them and have customer to customer interactions and customer to employee interactions. In 2020, the hair care market was estimated at $9.15 billion and with an annual growth rate of 4.7%, by the year 2027, the hair care market is expected to hit $12.63 billion. The growth of the hair care market is attributed to the awareness of benefits of maintaining your natural hair. The problem that we are solving is the lack of presentation for curly-haired individuals and avoiding the curly-haired market subscription. And the solution, presenting a customizable subscription box that caters to the need of every hair type in a cost-effective manner. Thank you. First of all, I, I think I speak for the rest of us, Clint. I was incredibly impressed with um, what you all put together, I think. I think um, addressing a need in, in, for that market is great. Uh, what exactly are you selling? What we're doing is we're finding products that already exist and we're pairing them with people who need them. Are you getting like sample sizes from these, these other companies? Like how are you sourcing those products? Our plan for once we are fully up and running is to buy in bulk for wholesale. How are you going to have um, so many product types to be able to accommodate to really anomaly hair? We're planning on starting with a small inventory and growing as we grow to include more brands. So how does a monthly subscription model work when, um, you know, especially curly hair types are not going to be using a lot of products within a month? There's a monthly and bi-monthly option and the thing that makes us kind of different is that we have more than say a shampoo and conditioner. So say I would get like a gel in one box and a mousse in the other. So just kind of cover all the bases. I'm wondering what you're doing to ensure that once the customer has taken the quiz and you know received the recommended products, they're not just going to turn to, to Amazon to circumnavigate that $25 cost. But what we address is we actually have a lower cost. With $25 for the entire box of five products, it's a lot more expensive to go out and individually buy those products retail. You were saying you were buying the products in bulk. Are you repackaging them or are you just selling them in the box? So they are going to be repackaged. I actually have. We recently got in what our boxes will look like here. Thank you so much. That concludes the seven minute Q&A. I think there could be a bit more of an opportunity for them around sampling because I can imagine these many mm -hmm. brands are seeking to get their samples in the hands of qualified prospects. And if their survey is able to help them identify who those qualified prospects are, um, I think there could be something there. Yeah, I think sampling would be the way to go for them. If they are able to kind of recalibrate themselves a bit on the sampling uh, side. So if they're able to do a digital data business model, this could be incredibly lucrative because you get free samples. You don't need, you won't have, you'll have zero product costs. So it could be really interesting if they went down that direction. The next pitch comes from My College App, a team of students who aim to create a virtual college counseling department right in the palm of your hand. My College App is a college application organization tool for both students and counselors. The app will provide informational and organization tools for applying made easy. It also includes access to students, high school college counselors, and freelance college counselors. Hi, I'm Colleen Kazanjan, the Director of Coding and Data Analytics. I was in charge of coding the app and technological duties. Hi, I'm Troy Prophet, Creative Director of Design and Marketing. I was in charge of the visual design name for the app, which included the logo, layout, and color scheme of the product. Hi, I'm Amila Kanu, Director of Media and Advertising. I was in charge of creating our social media platforms and promotions. Hi, I'm Jordan Maggot, Director of Communications. I was in charge of sending out emails, messaging, and getting in contact with various people. The problem we are addressing is, as seniors in high school, we discovered that the college process has been extremely overwhelming, complicated, and stressful, whether you're a student, counselor, or even a parent, even with a well-developed and amply resourced college counseling program for bullets. We cannot imagine how students at a high school three times the size of ours with only a single counselor felt. We wanted to create a solution to eliminate the stress of organizing, so we created My College App to break down the college application process. 
So what features do we offer? When first logging in, you will see a home screen, which we have called informational pages. As you scroll through, you will see that there are important informational resources, such as college admissions vocabulary for those unfamiliar with the process, financial aid resources, test taking resources, and other college application related tools. Next, you will find the calendar page, which is there to help users keep track of important dates and deadlines. The third tab is tasks and notes page, which allows the user to jot down general notes as well as keep a checklist for what they need to get done. The messaging tab gives the users quick access to communicate with their college counselors. The essay writing tab helps to organize the many college essays and supplementals that accumulate during the process. The activities tab allows users to track the different activities a user may have participated in from freshman year all the way through senior year. Finally, we have included a professional services page that lists professional essay coaches, tutoring services, and freelance college counselors. Our customer target is made up of two groups, our buyers to schools and users. We are targeting buyers 60% since they are the ones actually buying the service, but our users are still 40% because their attention is very important. We plan on pricing the app at $1.50 per student when the school signs up. We came up with this price by researching other platforms college counseling departments pay to use. The average amount spent per student in Maryland public schools is about $14,762. Paying for our services is 0.0012%. We make a profit and the schools have affordable access to a college counseling department. Our operating expenses per month is $24 and every student we add to the app will cost us 20 cents. Our cost of production per month with a sample size of 1,200 students is $264 and the gross profit will come out to $1,800. When subtracting expenses, we will make $1,536 per month from the school in a year making $18,432. This pricing plan leaves us with 85% revenue from sales and 15% expenses. Our employee salary will be accounted for through the commission from net revenue. The four of us get 20% commission off net revenue and 10% goes towards saving for future expenses. We did research and found that there are about 56.4 million public school students, 5.7 million private school students, 3.1 million charter school students, and 2.5 million homeschool students in the United States. We are looking to market towards public schools more closely since they are such a high number in our customer segment. We had some students and faculty members preview the design and layout by downloading our prototype. Our team mentor, Abigail Blunt, said to us that navigating the process, understanding the terminology, providing a calendar to keep us on track will be a lifesaver for my 10th grade son about to enter the college admission process. Our next quote comes from Bullis football coach Patrick Salano, who before Bullis used to work at a public school. After reviewing the app, he told us he saw the disadvantage students had with a lack of resources for college assistance. Our final quote presented comes from Julia Vasco, a Bullis senior, telling us that there is a great need for college assistance not only with public school students, but private schools as well. In researching competition, we found there is currently no program out right now that provides all the services My College App does. We did find CollegeWise, an online service that helps transfer students find and apply to their best fit colleges. We provide access to college counseling services, tutoring, and test prep, as well as organizational tools such as our scheduling, messaging, tracking activities, note-taking, task tracking, and essay writing pages. We provide links for free help for all of those things and help that requires payment as well. CollegeWise charges one-hour meetings at the rate of $200 to complete admissions programs and $5,500 to cover every part of the college application process from start to finish. We are free to students and charge a low price of $1.50 a month per student towards schools. What will we do with the 10K? We've broken it down into four categories. With half our prize money, we plan on giving free memberships for six months to Rockville Public High School, the Bullet School, and the KIPP Public Charter Schools, a network of free open enrollment college preparatory schools in low-income communities throughout the United States. We're giving these free memberships in order to test the efficiency of our app so we eventually can make it available to schools nationwide at its full potential. Our MVP is able to be downloaded and used, but we still need to fix a few features before we make it available to the public. A thousand will go towards professional development to pay coders to finish the final adjustments in the app so that we can fully publish. Our last 40% will be split in half. $2,000 going towards ads and marketing and $2,000 going towards expanding our brand and future operating expenses. Out of our timeline, we created surveys to send out to college counselors and students to make sure our app fills our need. Our second stage is when we created the app itself. Our third stage took place at the end of the second trimester for our prototype testing stage. 
Stage four happened in the beginning of our third trimester in which we accumulated logistics to finish our product. Last week's is decoded and features were made so that right now, in our stage five, the pitch competition, we are presenting the best version so far. Feature timeline after we win the $10,000 will be broken into five stages. Stage six, we will be finishing coding with professional help. Day seven, we will begin the process by reaching out to different schools. We have planned in our budget to give three different schools a free six month trial. Stage eight, we will review feedback from our testing and fix our app. Stage nine, we will make our app available to the public. Stage 10, we will continue to expand our app. Our main goal for company growth is serving our customers. We plan on helping thousands of students prepare for applications and reach thousands of college counselors to list their services on our app. Growing our brand means reaching as many schools and students as possible. We only thrive if our customers are thriving. The college application process is stressful and overwhelming no matter where you go. Students with more access to college counseling, tutoring, and professional help get an edge in applications many students do not receive. Students, counselors, and parents that are going through and have gone through this process understand this feeling. My college app wants to make a change, so we broke down the steps towards the finish line for applying made easy. Use the scanner code on the screen to get direct downloadable access to the app. Try it right now. The app is usable on the phone, tablet, and online. If you have any questions, please contact our email. Feel free to follow our Instagram and use the link provided as another way to download the app. Thank you. I was really impressed with your with your pitch, and I really liked the... Um, the approach to low income and disadvantaged communities. I thought that was really, really good. Because it's sort of like a place where it organizes the application process and information all in one. Is that kind of your goal? It's really an organizational and informational application hub for students to use. I'm going back to my college days way back in the day and like I wanna say there were little tools like that available. Maybe not prescriptive as yours, but have you Consider that in the competitive analysis. There's a website called College Wise, kind of similar to our concept, but they do not have as many resources as we use. How did you come up with the development costs for this product? For right now, the costs of running it are very minimal because we're using free resources and it's just our team putting it together. Um, educational institutions are notoriously difficult to sell into because there's so many layers of bureaucracy within them. And I'm curious what y'all have learned about who um, at these schools is going to be the primary decision maker. It's mostly going to be the college counselors and they'll probably go through their administration to figure out if they can purchase this app. I'm curious how you're going to prove a positive ROI not just to the users, but to the customer as well. From our app, making this college process easy so that their students can get into top universities and are able to make the school look good, as well as the students um, going on to further their education. Thank you so much, My College App. That concludes your seven minute Q&A session. So as long as their business model covers the 20 cent cost of acquisition, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and and the, the demo looks really polished. I also think that there are some gaps in their collective skill set that they'll need to fill. Um, a lot of the data right now requires manual entry, and I think that they'll um, they'll need some resources and support to help them flesh those things out. I think it's incredibly marketable. They have a very diverse team. It's all yeah. girls in tech. Yeah. Like, totally. Yes, right? Like, they coded it themselves. Next up is Politopedia an app idea that provides a fun and easy way to learn about politics so voters can make informed decisions. Politopedia is a social networking app to connect younger generations to politics. Our app provides information and policy views on candidates in your elections, provides debate forums to discuss political policies, and information and articles on political topics. The main reason Politopedia is needed is because our team feels that there's not enough education out there and interaction um, for young voters. So with Politopedia, we're going to be able to educate young voters because we're going to have unbiased information from the left, right, neutral um, articles in our application. And also it promotes conversations and debate with our question of the day feature where people can go in and answer questions um, based on the current political climate or current events. So it really connects both 
sectors which we think is important. So we're really giving people um, a platform where young people can uh, learn about politics and different issues. Our app has four main prongs. The first being our homepage, which has concise news stories for our generation's short attention span. The second being our question of the day, which will be a debate forum for political questions. The third being our election page, which will show political views for candidates in local, state, and federal elections. The final being our questionnaires page, which will show where your political views and ideas rank up with the rest of the users. Our target market is men and women between the ages of 18 and 25 to educate them on politics. We expend, we expect to only spend about $1 per customer for app upkeep and marketing. Market for Politopedia is huge. We're the first app of our kind to have a um, social media discussion platform, um, have an article platform where we can educate and also have specific information about local elections and local candidates. So it's a three prong type of thing, which is very different from an app, for example, like starting point. Um, starting point is a, another political app, um, but where we differ is that discussion platform type of communication, social media aspect, um, and then also really in-depth looks at local elections and the question of the day, which will keep our customers coming back. Our main competitor is an app called A Starting Point. While they present you with answers to policy questions from different elected officials in the government, Politopedia gives you policy views for candidates from different local, state, and federal elections, along with our debate forum and political news. We survey 103 people with a population of diverse ethnicity. The people who answer our survey include the age range from 10 to 69, with the mean number of ages 53. We have a balanced and male and female population of respondents. We decide to use the pie chart and bar graphs to present the result of these important questions. The first question is, how likely are you going to use the app to help you research and choose candidates? And there are mostly 80% of the respondents combined who chose very likely and likely. And the second question is, how educated are you in elections? And we can see that um, they're educated for the number 47.7% of educated level there are 18.9% of respondents who chose very educated, and there are some were educated in the percent of 23.6. So the people with educated knowledge are willing to use the app to collect information for elections. About 30% of respondents chose the policy views as the fact, important factors when they're researching and choosing the candidates, um, whether backgrounds, Consistent, consistency of views and goals and agendas and character and leadership and experiences, we are going to include those features on in our application. The respondents who chose the candidate policy views as important features on the voting app are nearly 50%, and there are about 25 and 27% who chose the candidate voting with records and the ballot question information. So what we're going to do is to present this reliable information on those features on our application. So from this data, we can tell that there's a need to educate these people, to have them interact um, about politics, um, which was great news for us. If we win this year's Shark Tank, we will invest about 60% of the money in app development, about 60% of the money in app upkeep, and about 20% of the money in advertising. So here we have our long-term investment strategy. If we win the $10,000 from this event, by April 2021, we're going to use $6,000 to finalize app development. Make sure it's working great, looks great. Then, from May to June of 2021, we're going to begin aggressively marketing the app in Maryland with $2,000. So, you know, getting out there, advertising, making sure people know about it. By September 2021, we aim to expand the app to DC and Virginia, so the rest of the DMV. Then by November 2021 through February 2022, keep on adding new states, getting more people interested in what we're doing here. And then by September 2022, 
we hope to have blood PD in all 50 states. So the remaining $2,000 will be used throughout this process for upkeep and all the other things we may need. Although ad revenue varies, we expect to make about 18 cents per view. We expect to have about a thousand daily customers by launch, so we'll be making $180 per day. There is just not enough unbiased political information out there, which allows 18 to 25 year olds to decide their own political opinions. Politopedia creates a way for young people to interact and discuss political issues in a safe setting and gives them information about candidates for local elections to make a more informed decision about who they're voting for. I'm Sam Bromberg. Thank you for watching our presentation and vote Politopedia. I was impressed by the work that you guys did um, as a political hack. Um, I think reaching out to younger folks is kind of the key to our success in the future. Where are you guys getting your your data and your stories? So as a start, we were planning on being an aggregator, kind of taking stories from a bunch of different uh, kind of news outlets from both sides, so we have an unbiased opinion. So is there any thought to maybe a marketing pilot locally first that really hones in, gets as much market saturation as possible for younger audiences before expanding? I think that we would really spend a lot of time making sure it's very stable and very successful locally. I think more new apps tend to find um, it difficult to acquire new users, and I'd love to learn a bit more about your user acquisition strategy. But we're on our way there. But yeah, there's definitely more that we're focusing on doing to kind of getting in digital ads, exactly like you said. On that, um, how do you differentiate yourselves from all those other apps out there? The fact that Gen Z is probably politically the most split and how we are either all the way right or all the way left, and we're trying to kind of decrease that margin in between the two. Thank you for your time, Wikipedia. We're out of time for the Q&A. From a problem-solving perspective, I think they hit something that is really important, and I think they have a good premise for something. Yeah, I agree. I think it's definitely a, a problem that needs to be solved. Um, but I think acquiring users and keeping those users engaged is very, very challenging. And I think if, if they're building uh, an app with an ad model, that becomes even more challenging. Their approach on trying to do this for younger kids is yeah. smart. And one of the, the, the strengths that I thought of them was kind of the education piece. I thought that was really good. Like not assuming that their audience knows what a conserv what conservative means or what liberal means. As we all know, political conversations can be some of the most toxic out there. So I think they're going to have to make a decision about, you know, the role that they want to play in moderation and censorship of those exactly. conversations. I mean, that's like the crux of, you know, the problem that most of the social networks are facing right now. In this next pitch, we'll hear from EasySwaps, an innovative marketplace where users have the ability to sell, buy, and trade items without spending a penny. Time and time again about eBay. It is very impersonal. It is difficult to find the help I need. Things don't always sell. Lack of clarity on item authenticity. Are we really getting what you think you've purchased? The website is super difficult to navigate. And there is the trust factor. The fact is, too many people don't trust eBay, and its design is apparently flawed with an oversaturation of items and users. The process of listing items and waiting for them to be bought has frustrated millions of people around the globe, but no return for their e commerce needs. And from our market research and surveys, we have found that only 8.6% of listings on eBay are bought within the first four days, leaving millions of sellers on edge. How frustrating. Furthermore, close to 21% of our sample population have been scammed on eBay, and only 17% of people received a price they hoped they wanted when they were selling an item. Currently, eBay is the only place to turn to when buying used goods, but why would you ever want to use a platform that has so many problems? With all of this in mind, there must be a better way for people to receive value for their used items. So what's our solution? Our solution is Easy Swaps, a revolutionary multi-vendor marketplace where users can trade their items on a fair, easy, and intuitive site without the use of cash. No longer will users be waiting for their items to be bought on a site saturated with listings, and no longer will buyers have the fear of being scammed. With our cashless experience and intense vetting process, we have reimagined the way that people will interact with the used goods market. This is the beginning of our e-commerce takeover. The possibilities are endless. With our service, the way that people interact with goods online will forever be changed. Before we get into the details of Easy Swaps, let us introduce ourselves in our roles. Hi guys, I'm Spencer, and I'm in charge of branding and marketing. 
Hello, my name is Tyler and I'm responsible for revenue and expense development. I'm Dean Katz and I'm responsible for website development and idea management. And my name is Brad and I'm the lead for customer experience. We focus on six key elements to create the most intuitive and enjoyable marketplace experience. First and foremost, we provide a cashless way to buy and sell items through the use of our proprietary digital currency, the EasyCoin. Users are credited easy place into their accounts shortly after making sales. Second, our scam-proof guaranteed purchase model provides the best experience for customers. There is no stress while buying or selling items. A thorough evaluation of each product is done at our warehouse so we can create a fair market value for each product. Thirdly, each item that a user lists is guaranteed to be bought on our site, unlike eBay, where you would have to wait one to two weeks. Fourthly, we provide shipping at no cost to the user. And last but not least, we offer live support and customer experience for every user during their EasySwaps experience. Let me explain to you how EasySwaps works through an example transaction. Let's say Sam is looking to swap a MacBook computer for a Nintendo Switch. He hops onto the EasySwap site and goes through the listing process. After inputting the item description, EasySwap displays a range of values that Sam can be guaranteed to receive for his computer given that the computer is in said condition. Once Sam accepts the offer, EasySwaps will send Sam a box to give an address for him to ship his computer back to us where we will inspect and ensure item quality. After final inspection, EasySwaps will credit the coins to Sam's account and EasySwaps will list the item on the EasySwaps buy page. Now with the coin, Sam can purchase an Nintendo Switch without even pulling out his wallet. Unlike other sites, the beauty of Easy Swaps there is that there are multiple ways to participate. You can choose to engage our revolutionary cash experience or choose to mix and match the use of coins and cash. Our revenue is based off the ad revenue and the revenue we will make people buying coins. We plan to keep the coins in a one to one ratio until after 50 coins. After 50 coins, there will be a 10% discount on how much money you actually spend. We use this ratio because it keeps a good amount of coins in the market and it allows the people to buy more coins than as much. Ad revenue will also help because you will use targeted ads based on which products are on a page at a given time. And we got our numbers for our ad revenue based off of Google AdSense. While ad revenue is small at first, it scales as the company grows. This graph shows our financial projections for five different levels of projected users starting at 10,000 until 1 million. As you can see, we lose money for the first three years that is typical amongst any startup. After the first three years, we should be growing at a steady rate and our profit good by large amounts. Throughout the duration of our capstone course, we've been working on our MVP website design. Our website was developed in tandem with a professional website developer. Here are some of the key features of our site as I'm scrolling through. I've gone through the home page, the buy page, and now I'm going to go into the sell page. This is where users will now list their items for coins. As you can see, they would input it. user informa item information, receive an offer, send an item, and final offer and coins be sent. Our survey confirmed our initial target audience. Many of our customers will be male and female around 16 to 45 years old. Our customers will have to be relatively proficient with technology as they will have to take specific pictures and understand the website functionality. At first, EasySwaps will be only be open to U.S. residents as a pilot run. When conducting our market research from our survey respondents, we concluded that 96.3% of users find it a benefit that they would have an immediate valuation of their product from our team at EasySwaps. Furthermore, over 80% of users love the cashless experience and over 83% of people would use the site more than once a month. To justify our financial projections and claims, we conducted market research on the e-commerce market. From two independent market researchers, we have found that the estimated global e-commerce value is over $9 trillion as of 2019, and, they grow, and growing at a CAG close to 14.7% in the next seven to eight years. The e-commerce growth rate compared to retail growth rate is expected to triple over the next three years. With that being said, we know that there's plenty of consumers experimenting and buying items on e-commerce sites. Using the investments in the bull sharks, we have slowed up the potential money in the three key areas. Most importantly, we need the money in order to fully bed out the site and integrate full functionality with our digital currency. We have spent close to 70% of the investment on website development, 15% on getting our name and brand out into the world, and 15% of solving the logistical issues and building out management. Our future timeline will consist of four main phases in getting our, our business to fully up and running. Phase one will be bringing the website to full functionality. Phase two will be testing the website and introducing our business to the market. Phase three will be hiring a team of employees to help alongside us. And phase four will be creating and adding a mobile app to go along with our website. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope you see the potential in our revolutionary marketplace easy swaps. We look forward to answering your questions in the upcoming Q&A session. First of all, we were, we were really impressed with the work that you've done and, and we, were, we were joking that when we were in high school, we wished we would have 
had half the, the brands that you guys do. You focused on eBay a little bit and, and the trust factor around eBay. But can you explain how you solve that issue with your customers? Our site solves that by making a cashless experience. So basically, items are guaranteed to get bought by us and consigned on our site. What's the point of the coins? You can fill the gap with, you know, buying the coin. For example, the phone worth 500 coins and the Mac worth 1,000 points. And you can yourse yourself add 500 coins. Um, if you guys were to essentially, you know, purchase those million iPhones, you know, through your coin, but there were to be no demand for them, no one interested on the other side of purchasing them, what's going to happen when you're left with a million iPhones? If we were to get rid of some inventory that wasn't going to end up selling, it wouldn't be a big deal for us because we're not losing. We didn't have to spend actual money on those items. I'm curious how you're planning to kind of get that marketplace off the ground and, and build it up in a, in a way that's going to be enticing to your users. We're not like eBay where the customer sets the price, we set the price, so we're going to be able to like make sales. Thank you for your time. That's the, the end of your seven minute Q&A. Do you think there could be a use case for a platform that kind of facilitates a barter system? Like I think that certainly like this person might see more value in you know, the other person's item than they, and I think, I think there could be something there. Um, that, and I think there could be some interesting technology to power that, and, you know, perhaps even just a subscription model to use like, the service. That I could, I could see having some legs. Um, and like, yeah, because subscription model, ad-based model for revenue, then it becomes very simple. I think there's a, there's a base business model. And if the, the true struggle is how are you selling unwanted goods or unsold goods? Yeah. What does the secondary marketplace look like? Our next pitch showcases Alleviation, a fast-acting body shower and muscle pain reliever in one. Let's take a look. My name is Madison Rao, and I'm the business manager, co-founder, and prototype specialist for our product, Alleviation. My name is Lainey Green, and I'm also one of the co-founders. I worked as a prototype specialist, as well as a consultant for our product. I'm Ainsley Booth, and I am the third co-founder, as well as law consultant for Alleviation. And I am Max Samuels, the fourth co-founder and website manager for Alleviation. Using the latest technology, we made a body scrub that leaves your aching muscles feeling more relieved than ever. Replace your usually sticky muscle relieving gels that have a strong menthol scent with a fast acting convenient scrub that relieves muscle pain in seconds while in the shower. Muscle relaxants on the market today take too much time and are not convenient. The need to wait for your muscle relaxant gels to dry before putting clothes on and the strong scent of menthol can be very negative and oftentimes even cause headaches. In the pain relief market, there has not been a product created that is convenient, helpful, and leaves you feeling rejuvenated with a light lavender scent. We propose a new way to find pain relief while the user is already in the shower. This product has been assembled with a pain management specialist to not only be isolated to the specific area of discomfort, but also serve as an efficient exfoliant without the strong menthol odor that is sold in muscle relaxants today. In the beginning stages of our product's development, we sent out a survey in order to collect data regarding our customers' experience and opinions on muscle relieving products. We were able to get 47 responses, which actually helped us form our customer target very easily. A few of the results that helped us do so were gender, which ended up being almost equal. We also were able to get an idea for how often people use their current muscle relieving products, which was mostly every month. We want our product to be something that people are able to use on a weekly basis and something that is not inconvenient. Grasping a general age range also helped us to figure out our target market. Most of the people who use muscle relieving products that took our survey were in their teens or early 20s. This was useful information for actually selling our product. The last bit of information that was most helpful was identifying people's average physical activity time so we know how often people will be using our product. 66% of our survey respondents selected that they participated in physical activity every single day. Using the latest technology, we have created a muscle relieving body scrub that is convenient, helpful, and leaves you feeling rejuvenated with a light lavender scent. The product has been a assembled with a pain management specialist to not only be isolated to the specific area of discomfort, but also serve as an efficient exfoliant to keep your skin smooth. After participating in physical activity, in order to correctly use alleviation, use warm water, allow skin to soften for 5-10 to 10 minutes, apply the scrub to the affected area, and softly massage it into the skin for about 30 seconds. Allow the scrub to sit for 3-4 to four minutes, and then rinse. 
This product will transform the pain relief market, and it's the first muscle relaxing body scrub. The market for bath and shower products, according to Fortune Business Insights, was $41.33 billion in 2019, and is expected to rise to over $57 billion over the next 10 years. The market for muscle relaxing drugs, according to Farmer Web, is $5.77 billion. Thus, we are entering into a large market with tons of opportunity for our product to thrive. After actually creating the scrub, my group members and I tested the product ourselves and we were very impressed with the results. We wanted to give our family and friends the chance to give us their opinions as well. We gathered a group of friends and family who were willing to test a sample as well as fill out a survey discussing if they would use this product again and what their experiences were actually using it. Although the actual alleviation scrub will be sold in a 12 ounce container, our testers received a replica of the final container in a 4 ounce version. With a list of instructions and ingredients that the scrub contains, we received results in a Google form that our testers filled out. We had a plethora of positive results and were able to get a few of the participants to record the results to share with you all today. After using this body scrub, I feel more relaxed and relieved than ever. This scrub was super easy to apply in the shower and had a very appealing texture that not only left my muscles feeling less sore, but my skin feeling more exfoliated. I would definitely use this scrub again as it had many positive effects to my everyday shower routine. I loved the smell of the scrub. When I was using it, I felt like I was in a spa. I'd 100% use this after a workout to alleviate muscle aches or even just if I want to have an extra soothing shower. I'm a big fan of exfoliating scrub, so having one that also helps with muscle pain is super awesome. Having Icy Hot as our competitor is actually an advantage. Although they are a successful brand that are proven to be efficient, people do not have another option to relieve their muscle soreness. Icy Hot causes causes skin inflammation, has a strong, unbreathable scent, burns the skin, and is very inconvenient. People have not experienced a product that relieves their muscles in a clean, convenient way. Icy Hot requires you to wait for it to dry before putting your clothes on, and with alleviation, all you have to do is add that extra step to your shower routine. Coming out of the shower smelling like fresh lavender while also not having to wait for anything to dry will be the next most convenient way to relieve muscle soreness. Icy Hot also charges its customers $29.99 for 12 ounces, while we will be charging $14.99. Here's how my team and I will use and distribute the $10,000 if we won. We broke it up into five sections. We are putting $3,000 into cost of goods sold. The cost to create one 12 ounce container is $4 and we will be including free shipping. Next, we have a section for reinvesting. We will put $1,000 into saving and buying more machinery such as mixers to help us create the product in a more efficient way. For product development, we would use $2,500 to create new scents and progress our product in any way we can to help our customer loyalty. For labor costs, the labor cost money is going to the people that will help us create and expand alleviation. Lastly, for marketing, we will put $2,500 into ads to make sure our product is getting out there. Precisely, we will put $500 into Facebook ads, $500 into Snapchat ads, $1,000 into Instagram ads, and $500 into YouTube ads. If we earn the $10,000, we want to first obtain a patent for our product, FDA approval, and the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Then, we hope to fund mass production of our product to be ready to sell on the website. We hope to secure sponsorships from athletic companies or an athlete to further advance our product and the name. We also hope to sponsor whole teams of athletes for constant distribution. Eventually, we also hope to enter drugstore retailers. With the $10,000, we hope to expand our company into the major pharmacy and drugstore retailers for in-store purchases. By doing this, our product will be sold in places such as CVS, Rite Aid, Walgreens, Walmart, Target, and Cigna Express Scripts. Similarly, we hope to enter major online shopping channels. When doing this, our product is able to be seen in trusted stores, at which we believe will double our initial $10,000, at least 1,200 individual products through the expanded channels and our personal website within the first six months after our company takes flight. My team and I are determined to find a way to relieve muscle pain that people can incorporate in their everyday shower routine. The muscle relieving products that are in the market today all require you to wait several minutes before putting on clothes and oftentimes it just ends up rubbing off if you do not wait long enough. Also, taking away the intense smell of muscle relieving agents that are being sold currently was prudent to us because it was a strong scent and can oftentimes cause headaches. We appreciate your time and attention and ask that if you have any further questions to reach us at our website, www.alleviation.store. I don't think there is medicinal additives in this, but that means you won't technically be allowed to call it a pain reliever. 
So then what's the backup strategy and how you market the product? The only substance that does relieve muscle pain was the oil, the essential oil. I'd just love to learn a little bit more about scientifically um, why it works uh, and how it works. We also made an exfoliant, which is also in a lot of ways pain relieving. How do you plan to get FDA approval for something like this? So we did set aside some money which Ainsley can go into. We want this product to be serious. We want to get it out in the market. We do want to like take that chance and even though it will be difficult. Can you sell this product without an FDA approval? Determining whether it's a uh, muscle relieving or what certain ingredients we put in, like Vanessa was saying, if we put in sort of medicines and stuff like that, definitely FDA approval. So how would you do, um, how would you deal with the medical trial? Um, how we were going to put away our $10,000, knowing now that most of that money should go into testing. That uh, wraps up your seven-minute Q&A session. But if I saw this, like, if they're at a farmer's market and they had a little stand, I would definitely buy it. You're marketing it more so it's just like a relaxing yeah. scrub or something like that. It yeah. doesn't require the FDA approval. Um, right. would, would be that hard to go. Yeah. I agree. I think maybe not making it a pain reliever. Um, I think one of the girls said uh, actually a good phrase to call it. it was like muscle something relax or something she said. The next pitch spotlights fit right, a browser extension that shows what you look like in the clothing you're shopping for. I sure hope the shirt fits. Every time I order a shirt it doesn't fit. If only I had a website I could order a perfectly good shirt that fits right. Good. Here's your shirt. So what was that package earlier? Oh, I got a new shirt. I don't know if you guys are going to like it. I need to try it on now. Alright, here's my new shirt. I thought I was going to fit better, but apparently not. Dude, you should use FitRight. What's FitRight? It's this new cool Google extension where you can use your personal measurements up to create a 3D model of yourself to see how the clothes will fit. All right, so I can see myself yeah, and basically so, like put my own body in a website. Exactly, and eventually your laptop will come out of your height, how big you are, your arm length, your leg length, if you're wearing a shirt, too short to pants. All right, there it is, fixed. It's saying it fits, so we'll see if it when it comes yeah. to delivery. Hello, Mr. Townsend, here's your package. Thank you. It's on. Perfect. Thank you. Have a good day. Let's see it. Come on, try it on. Alright. There we go. Oh my god, it looks good. Dude, it fits. Oh my god. god. It feels so much better. It fits right. Hello, sharks. Have you ever been shopping online and see something you like and buy it for only when it actually comes in, you try it on and it doesn't fit right? Our product, Fit Right, allows you to be at ease while shopping for clothes online. My name is William Gill. I'm the managing and product director who is responsible for ensuring that our extension runs smoothly. Lead, leading product initiatives and getting rid of any roadblocks that may occur. My name is Jordan Greenstein and I'm the creative director. My job is to market our product in an effective way to ensure that the interface is successful and pleasing to our, to our users. My name is Chase Townsend and I'm our finance director. I'm responsible for managing our finances and figuring out all of our expenditures. My name is James Orkanaki and I'm our operations manager whose purpose is to make sure that there are effective planning and organization on a day-to-day -day basis. Over 25% of people surveyed say that one half of the time they ordered clothing online, they were unsatisfied with how the product looked on them. The value returns in 2018 was upwards of $95 million. This is a lot of money that's being lost by the companies. 34% of people surveyed said they plan on returning their holiday gifts. To combat this issue, we plan on implementing an optional share your avatar feature with your friends and family so they know what clothes would fit. So introducing FitRight, our product is a 3D model design that will be implemented on our website and you'll see yourself represented by a 3D avatar with measurements that save time and money. It will give the user a better representation of how clothes should fit. Your time is valuable. You shouldn't be wasting it hoping your clothes you're waiting for actually fits. Don't waste time returning clothes when the problem could have been avoided with FitRight.
When our extension is complete, you will find it's easy to use on any clothing website that we partnered with for a more streamlined experience. Why do people need our product? Fairrights ultimate goal is to help consumers and business owners save time and money while keeping a high satisfaction for our customers in the apparel market. Our platform will make buying clothes online extremely stress-free with no worry of having to return your item due to them not fitting correctly. So our first chart, uh, it's a survey that we found online. Uh, a survey we found online shows the difficulty uh, on a one to five scale on how hard it is to find clothes that fit. This should not be the case uh, with our product and it won't be. Our second chart is when you order online, you, you'll never know how, uh, how it'll look. Maybe the leg length is too long or the sleeve length is too short. Clothes come in all different sizes. It's who shops online. So from ages 10 to 19, 63.6% .6 of users are shopping online by themselves. And 50 to 59 is 18.2%. So according to this graph, um, NPR collected the data of the frequency that U.S. shoppers shop online. And it shows that 43% of adults shop online at least once a month. This gives our product a lot, a lot of opportunity to be used by companies and consumers to keep the satisfaction high. So for unsuccessful delivery attempts, this graph represents the amount of time that closed order did not fit when they arrived. For example, uh, 11 of the people surveyed answered that 50% of the time the clothes they ordered didn't fit, which means they will always fit. We decided that as a group, we wanted to support a company called the Clean Clothes Campaign. Um, the Clean Clothes Campaign is an issue in the garment industry where companies exploit child labor laws in other countries where workers have bad working conditions. The Clean Clothes Campaign Networks works to structurally improve working conditions and support the empowerment of manufacturing workers in the global garment and sportswear industries. They raise awareness on this issue and put pressure on companies and governments to take responsibility to ensure that the right of work, rights of workers are protected. As a company, we are donating 2.5 percent of our profits to them. So, for a pricing model, our pricing model will take 1 percent commission from the retailer if the customer uses our product, as well as an implement, as well as implementing ads on the platform. And we'll be doing advertising, supporting the clean clothes campaign, charging businesses 1 percent if they use our product. And we'll be giving back 2.5 percent of our profits to the clean clothes campaign. The way our business model is set up, we will incur a large portion of our expenses right in the beginning while making our product. However, once our product is finished, our average variable costs will continue to decrease and just have maintenance costs. Once we get our product to the point where we find a company to partner with, then all we need to do is flip a switch and we can expect an exponential growth. For investment, we plan on dividing the $10,000 and putting it right back in the business. $3,500 will go to expanding our software development, while $6,000 will go into research and development. We'll put $500 into savings for future expenses. So our competition is MyTailor and MTailor. And while MTailor and MyTailor sell their clothing with the tailoring aspect, we partner up with other companies to sell their clothes, and they make money off of selling their product while we make money off of advertising. And, and creating a 1% charge. So we're on a timeline. Um, it shows that our idea was formulated in 2019 in our business model design class and has stuck with the venture ever since. We started to form our group and establish rules as the first point in 2019. Then we started researching our competitors and found out how they operated their business and marketed their platform. Then we reached out to a website developer to help us through the process and this was in 2021. We have continued to research and expand our idea to make it the best that it could possibly be. Millions of people buy clothes every day and too many of them are not happy with their purchase. Returning clothes is a hassle, takes up your valuable time, and costs the company money. Our 3D avatar allows the customer to see how they will look wearing different outfits that save, and will save them time and money from having to return the item. Using our product will guarantee a better fit and more satisfied customers. In turn, there will be fewer returns on products, which will save the company's money and resources from having to gather the item and pay, the, pay for new shipment to satisfy the customer. So Sharks, no more excitedly ordering your clothes online, only for when it gets there to be disappointed. Help us create FitRight, the service to flip the market on instead. How the avatar is created, um, how that interacts with the um, e-commerce website. So I'd love to just begin by understanding that a bit more deeply. Our, for to make the model, we were thinking of using 
the software and it'd be that you're able to type in like your measurements, how tall you are, how wide you are, your arm length, all that sort of stuff. And that software would build your avatar. This software already exists that allows people to, to build avatars. But the difference between the software that already exists and what we're doing is that our competitors, M. Taylor and My Taylor, they only sell their own clothes. We're not selling clothes. We're selling the product to help companies save money. And why do you think it is that um, these companies, many of which have quite a bit of money on hand, aren't investing in this technology themselves right now? They're not investing in this because a company like this isn't really on the market yet. There's a whole industry mechanism for how this works. So my concern is how are you going to get the avatars to really size fit? Start with the smaller retailers that would be more likely to divulge their information. We can start from there and maybe if we earn trust in the industry, then we can continue forward. Is there any competitive analysis against Fit Analytics or Fit Finder, which are some of the most widely used platforms for sizing? That's the beauty of FitRight because with us, you will know when you, when you drag it on your avatar, you will see how it will look it maybe if the shirt will go down a little too long or ride up a little too short or if the sleeves will go will are a little long or a little short. Okay. All right, thank you so much guys. That was the question and answer session. If they like went to Bonobos and which has very specific sizing, um, and they built a custom avatar system for Bonobos. It is a problem. I mean, it's a good problem that they it needs to be solved in the industry. I love the, the problem you guys are, are seeking to solve, right? It, you know, it adds value both to the end customer and to the businesses who are dumping a lot of money into um, the costs associated with returns. Our second to last pitch features Reef All-in-One, a healthy frozen fish food for salt and freshwater fish. Hello everyone, our product is called Reef All-in-One and Reef All-in-One is a nutritious frozen fish food for all kinds of reef dwellers and freshwater fish. This is our team, my name is Teresa and we have other three members, Leah, Jared and Gina. The problem in the fish market today is that fish foods lack diverse ingredients forcing reefers and aquarius to feed a multitude of different kinds of food to their fish. None of these foods focus on invert and fish health equally. Our solution was a frozen fish food that contains a multitude of different fish, crustaceans, seaweed, and cyphopods for fish health, and an arrangement of copiopods, zooplankton, amino acids, and cytoplankton for great coral health. All these ingredients are binded with many different vitamins that benefit all creatures in the tank. Our competitive advantage in the fish food market is that our food has the most diverse and high quality ingredients with a variety of different sizes. Uh, compared to lower quality meaty foods with a lack of diversity and our food has the most nutritious diversity of amino acids, vitamin, plankton and meaty foods for all different kinds of fish and inverts while other foods have little to no focus on coral and invert, invert nutrition and health. The ingredients in our product are callianus, shrimp, zooplankton, seaweed, scallop, fish eggs, squid, vitamin formula, amino acids, cytoplankton, white fish, mussels and oyster. Our three-step investment plan would be to buy a flash freezer, then move on and buy more large grinders and cutters, and finally use money for shipping and ingredients. Here's our demo product video. Your food is simple. Simply open up your freezer, grab your pre-packaged food, then break off the amount of food that you want. Like so. Once the desired amount of food has been broken off, simply drop it in the tank water and allow it to thaw for two to five minutes. Once the food has been completely thawed out, it cannot be refrozen. It is important to only break off and thaw the amount of food required to feed your fish during that specific feeding time. To speed up the thawing process, we recommend to lightly stir the contents of the cup slowly with a metal straw or tongs. For best results, we recommend that any overflow box and or runoff should be completely shut off while feeding the fish food. This will allow any corals, fish, and inverts to grab a bite. Once we're ready and all thawed out, 
we will pour the contents of the cup into the tank. Our fish food is meant for any type of invert or fish in our aquarium. Here's an example of a beautiful rainbow anemone that has been eating very well with our reef all-in-one fish food. So for our market size, we have 100% for aquatic industry, 85% for hobbyists for in-home aquaria, 10% for fish breeders, and 5% for gallery and commercial aquariums. Our type of customer are reef tank and fish owners and aquarius, and our customer's age is around 25 to 55 years old. As for right now, our average spend per customer is $25, and it was subject to change throughout our business timeline. Our three main competitors are Fish Ross Fish Food, Larry's Reef Free Frenzy, and San Francisco Bay. So our business model focuses on three main points, uh, our marketing plan, our testing, our distribution plan, and our nutritional value. So our marketing plan is focusing on person-to-person -person review, and the hobby, brand reputations, everything. So we're gonna be really focusing on providing really good customer service, answer any questions that are ever asked, and also provide a really high quality product that's unique and will build a good reputation for us. Um, one marketing idea that we are currently working on is collaborating with content creators in the reefing industry on both YouTube and on forums by sending them food to review and this will allow us to reach our target audience. So this recipe has been originally created in 2019 by me. Over the course of the three years we had plenty of time to make minor tweaks to the recipe and the ingredients list to provide the best fish food that we possibly can. Um, this fish food has been used in my home aquaria for the last seven months and um, in the video you uh, saw me using it so I would never sell what I don't use myself. And for the past three months I've had local aquarists around my area use this recipe. So currently we're only distributing locally and to, for um, curbside pickup. However, we have been able to ship overnight before. Um, however, if we win we plan to stop selling just one unit at a time and just go big and sh just shoot wholesaler and fish stores only. This will allow us to lower our price and also sell our fish foods in higher quantity and um, it relieves the risk or the, the burden of having to move a bunch of product. Our fish food ha contains ingredients for both carnivores and herbivores and everything in between so all nutritional needs will always be met with our fish food. No product has the amount of vitamins that our product has. A couple of the vitamins that we have are thymine, robof or roboflavin, and tons of others. We have about 30 different vitamins there that um, just, it's a multivitamin for them basically. So it, it fights off diseases and parasites. It gives them better colors, better growth, and they're just happier fish in general. And also we've noticed a huge increase in um, coral growth after using it. And that's due to the amino acid and planktonic matter that's added to our fish food. Um, the phytoplankton, the zooplankton, the calanus, all that stuff is is critical for, for these corals to grow. And with all this stuff in the in our fish food, nothing in our reef tank goes without a nutritious bite. If you have any questions about our product, please feel free to contact me, Jared, Teresa, or Leah. So I love the fact you're looking out for our fish friends um, and, and our sea and enemy friends um, and coral. How did you come up with the formula um, how expensive are the materials? Because when you listed all those materials, some of that seemed fairly expensive to scale. The past couple of years, it usually cost me about seventy-five to um, sixty dollars, depending on the season, um, to make about twelve to 10, twelve to fifteen pounds. Have you come up with a scaling system to make sure people don't overfeed and create nitrogen buildup? We are working on like blister pack ideas for little like one ounce packs. Is the plan to ship this e-commerce driven or are you are you looking at a retailer strategy? Right now we're just like we're going single units, but eventually we want to just go um, just go host wholesale and um, fill large orders for like the big box stores and um, as well as like the fish stores and the small businesses. It's like you're um, designing a product to serve a kind of smaller segment of that market right not everyone who has a goldfish is going to be purchasing this it's definitely um more focused on the reefing hobby and saltwater fish but we these ingredients can be fed to um like your freshwater fish those existing um foods are frozen foods that you're, you're speaking of 
they tend to only have one or two different kinds of ingredients. And then um, the ones that do have kind of a blend don't really focus on oral health and the vitamin aspect that we do. Hey, thank you so much. I really liked it. I didn't realize we had a pet food expert among us. I mean, I would really be curious on what your thoughts are. I think the demand um, it can definitely be there. Um, it sounds like they have a really good product. I think their greatest challenge, um, kind of in, along the lines of what Asha was digging into, is going to be their distribution. It's a really interesting idea, and I loved their demo. Like, that coral looked really, really good. In our final pitch, Prep to Table shares their innovative sealed, disposable food prep container that aims to stop cross-contamination in the kitchen before it starts. Let's take a look. We created our product, Prep to Table, the solution to cross-contamination. Dealing with diners when they have specific concerns about allergies or specific nutritional guidelines is one of the biggest challenges that we face in the restaurant. Our product allows the kitchen staff to prepare food in a sterile container. Our product has color so it stands out from other products in the kitchen. The chef preparing the food opens our product from a sterile disposable container, prepares the food, cooks the food, and is delivered to the customer at their seat. Our research with founding farmers and Kava was invaluable to see what the actual problem is inside the kitchen. It was a really eye-opening experience to be inside the kitchen. And one thing we learned is that the product must be disposable. Restaurant kitchens do not have the space to store and sterilize containers that aren't disposable. As someone who has suffered with food allergies for their whole life, I can only appreciate it from the customer side. However, spending time in kitchens, you can see the hustle and bustle makes it extremely hard to not have cross-contamination. And this is why we created our product, Prep the Table, the solution to cross-contamination. Hi, we're Prep the Table, the solution to cross-contamination. Prep the Table is a sealed disposable food container to reduce cross-contamination when eating out. I have suffered from food allergies all my life and was tired of all the miscommunication and there not being any resources or solutions to cross-contamination when dining out. This product is perfect for any customer suffering from food allergies or dietary restrictions in the restaurant space looking for a solution to help eliminate cross-contamination. Meet our team. I'm Jacob Maggot, co-founder of Prep to Table. I'm William Moreau, co-founder of Prep to Table. I'm Sloan Bernstein, co-founder and CEO of Prep to Table. And I'm Cole Hannon, a co-founder in Prep to Table. Our team has been working diligently with our board of advisors throughout our product development process this year. As you can see, we have assembled a team of experienced entrepreneurs, restaurant owners, and chefs. Mark Starin, author, entrepreneur, and professor. Dan Simons, founder and co-owner at Founding Farmers. And Chef Dimitri, the co-founder and executive chef at Kava. We assembled a top-notch legal and accounting team from Foley and Lardner and Rogers and Peters for our entity setups to prepare us for a capital raise. We are also in the process of filing a patent. So, what is the problem and why did we create Prep the Table? Through first-hand experience suffering from numerous food allergies, most restaurants claim to handle food allergies and dietary restrictions, but only to fall short. There is a muscle memory of the cooks and it is hard to change what they are used to doing when someone knows that they have an allergy. There are many language barriers in the restaurant kitchens and simply the surfaces are unsanitary and proper care to reduce cross-contamination isn't taken. We've had two versions of our product before our third and final iteration. Version 1 was a very large square-shaped lid and base that had large holes on top of the container. When we tested our product inside the kitchen, we learned that these holes on top would allow for the food above to drip inside of our product, ultimately causing cross-contamination. It was one of the major problems we were trying to solve. Version 2, however, we pivoted, keeping the container a large square shape, but adding small holes on the sides of our container, allowing for our food to breathe. These smaller holes would significantly reduce the cross-contamination. Our final product version, after doing experiments on our version 2 product and bringing it to Kava to test on site, 
we learned that our product was too large for the restaurant space and more room in our container would allow for more food waste as chefs like to fill up every container. We decided to cut our container size in half, which also allows for our product to store better inside the kitchen since it was smaller. This also cuts down on the cost of producing our product. We are working with our manufacturer to add mesh wire on the top of the holes on the side to try and make the holes as small as possible to eliminate cross-contamination while allowing our food to breathe. We decided to make our product black on the outside and gold on the inside. In working with the head chef at Kava, we learned that people with food allergies do not want to be singled out, but we need a colored product in order to make the line cook stop and think properly about using our product. This allows for our product to have a sleek and elegant appearance while accomplishing our goal. Our product is perfect for people with food allergies, dietary restrictions such as vegans and vegetarians, and people who want to eliminate cross-contamination for any reason. Around 26 million people in the United States, or around 10% of the adult population, have a food allergy. And on top of that, 19% of adults feel they are allergic to certain foods. This is a scientifically growing problem. 36% of people surveyed from the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunity have had three or more allergic reactions while dining in restaurants, which has increased fatality rates. 28% of fatalities have occurred as a result of food being improperly prepared within restaurants and other food establishments. When conducting surveys for our product, we were able to get the official Trader Joe's gluten-free Instagram account with 69,000 followers to post our product and survey onto their Instagram page. We received an overwhelming amount of responses and most of our survey answers were over 90% in favor of what we were asking. Here are three of our most important questions we asked, and you can see all of them were greater than 90% responding yes. A majority of our respondents also said that they would be willing to pay a $2 upcharge for a product like this in a restaurant. In addition to our advisory board of industry experts, our team consulted with a leading allergist, Dr. Howard Boltansky. Dr. Boltansky said any chance you have to reduce cross-contamination, you will greatly enhance the customer's safety. In doing our research, we found there are no direct competitors to our prep-to-table product. What we found are that restaurants can purchase piecemeal products which can be costly, take up space, and ultimately not be a solution for the problem. We have a multi-pronged marketing approach. We will utilize the ground and pound method of signing up restaurants one by one to gain some critical mass, similar to what we have done with Founding Farmers and Cobb. Second, we will utilize social media platforms with targeted ads showcasing our product as well as the restaurants that use the prep to table containers. We will work with restaurants to utilize their targeted marketing platforms via direct email, mail, and or social media to showcase this product to drive customers to their restaurants. We are planning to partner with regional and national food supply companies like Cisco and U.S. Foods to purchase large quantities and distribute among the restaurants they serve. We currently have two purchase orders in hand from Kava and Founding Farmers. Based on our analysis with Founding Farmers and Kava and talking with a few other local restaurants, we have determined we could easily sign up one restaurant per week for 50 units per week on a weekly recurring order. As such, this would generate $137,800 in revenue with a gross profit of 100% or $68,900 over the first 12 months. There are some upfront capital expenditures that we will use the winnings from this competition in addition to a friends and family capital raise to cover. In summary, what we have created is very simple and doesn't exist in the marketplace. We have found a solution and proven our concept with actual restaurants to significantly reduce cross-contamination in the food prep space as well as reduce the food anxiety for customers. If customers with allergies and dietary restrictions feel confident in a restaurant, they will tell others to come and become more frequent diners. We are finalizing our patent filing and if we win the competition, we will look for a small capital raise among friends and families to assist with upfront capital expenditures, including the actual manufacturer-ready prototype and initial purchase order. So judges, as you can see, Prep to Table has clearly solved the need in the food prep cross-contamination space. We will now turn it over for questions and answers. 
Just can you explain a little bit more kind of what the product is? It's a disposable, sterile allergy container that we sell directly to the restaurant. Is the food actually served at the dining table, like in a, in a full service fine dining environment on the platter or is it transferred to a plate? So everything's prepped inside the container and then the container is brought to the c customer at the table and it is kept sealed and it's opened right in front of the customer. I mean, where do you see yourselves in two years, three years? Expanding to other local restaurants and also possibly working with um, U.S. foods or bigger manufacturers to distribute our product for us. In the conversations you've had with um, restaurants, have they expressed um, a willingness to, pay, to, to pass that cost on to the customers. When speaking with Kava and founding farmers, they felt that they would not have a problem with upcharging their customers as it would ensure and help them to feel more comfortable. If revenue started to come in more because of this product, down the line they would not need to upcharge for it. That uh, wraps up your seven minute Q&A session. I think every consumer feels they deserve uh, an allergy-free meal. A certification entity is interesting. That yeah. does not exist today. Yeah. They'd make more money creating a seal that you put on the door that says, I have allergen-friendly HACCP plans and, you know, hand-washing protocols and container protocols. I mean, I could see like a specific use case for it on the fast casual line. They did think about bringing it into um, a seal of approval of some sort, there's more opportunity. With so many amazing ideas, Asha, Lars, and Winslow had a very difficult decision to make, deciding which company is most ready to turn their idea into a viable company. The judges have deliberated, and a decision has been made. I'm honored to welcome Christian Sullivan to deliver the results. Welcome, Christian. Thank you, Matt. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, thank you to you and to Maria for all your work supporting the students. Uh, most of all, though, I really want to thank the 32 students who have made up these eight great teams. I also want to thank the advisors, 16 advisors, that have really helped to make this a tremendous shark tank. These three sealed envelopes contain the judge's decision. Christian, the honor is yours. Thank you. And the first vote in the 2021 shark tank goes to my college app. Here's the second envelope. The second vote in the 2021 Shark Tank goes to My College App. And here's the final envelope. And we have a unanimous decision, the third and final vote in the 2021 Shark Tank goes to My College App. Congratulations, My College App. Let's take a closer look at the judge's decision. My group that really everyone equally, you can tell, participated in the development and even in the Q&A. When I had rank ordered them, my top two were the Reef People and the My College App. Okay. And that's after interviewing all of them, those are still my top two. Would be very um, eager to see them um, reinvest the revenue that they're generating back into the company. As you're building a, a, a company, you want to take as little out as possible and you want to be reinvesting as much as you can back in. Just launch it too and see what errors come up. So they can yeah, that's what I, yeah, I was going to say the trial by fire, I think. Throw them in the deep end and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just think they have the proficiency to take it, you know? Yep. Right. So I'm all passionate about college. They all want to right. go. The philanthropic angle. I mean, like, it's so yeah. cool. Like, I'd invest in it. They want yeah. it. I, I give it to them. I'm like, you can't go wrong, right? And then, if anything, I think it's so relatable. So they're going to get a lot more mentoring opportunities for people to help them and handhold them through right. development. You know, I, I just think it's very viable. So the My College app team is standing by live. So let's join them now to say well done. 
and ask them some questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations, my College App team. I'm pleased to welcome Head of School, Christian Sullivan, as well as Director of Entrepreneurship, Maria Antokas, uh, to help congratulate the My College App team. Welcome, Maria and Christian. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. This is my first bullish shark tank. Uh, what a tremendous endeavor. Uh, I'm just so impressed. And uh, many thanks to uh, Maria and Matt, and of course, Mark Riffey as well for the production this morning. I also want to thank our very generous sponsors, XML Group. Um, I've already thanked them uh, out there on the balcony, but to the to the mentors and also our judges, uh, we really do appreciate all the time and expertise you've given our, our fine young people. Thank you so much. And uh, to those seven teams that uh, aren't the winner this morning, uh, I'm, I, I, I feel for you. I could see the incredible efforts that you put in. Um, unfortunately, there could be only one winner this morning, um, and uh, but that doesn't mean that your projects won't have future success. Uh, I think they really did look amazing to me, and I want to congratulate you too. Uh, to my college app, uh, well done. Uh, an amazing idea. Um, really many congratulations, and, I, and I'm interested. Can you let us know a little bit about your inspiration, the motivation behind this uh, tremendous idea? So the way we kind of came up with it, me and Colleen and Jordan and Emil we were all sitting around like on, on the Google meeting. We were like, what's something that will have a large market and that won't go away? Like people are always going to be going to college. And we were seniors in the beginning of the college process and we were all stressed about it. And we we're just like, I just want to get through this first trimester because after that, I'm going to be able to, you know, calm down a little. So we were like, what if we make a college app? Because of course our wonderful college counseling team, they helped us immensely, but there were still things that we felt like we wish we had, or if it was just all in one place that kind of reduced the stress level. So that's kind of how we came up with the app. And we just thought about what we would want at that time or what we wish we would have had during the whole process in order to make it easier for those who don't have a college counseling team or do have a college counseling team and want some other resources. We really Hello. took, oh, I'm sorry, we really took how grateful we are for the resources we have at this school. And we wanted to give the resources we had to hopefully every school in the country, any student that wants to go to college. Well, well you know I what? really want to congratulate all four of you, <laughs> Colleen, Troy, Jordan, Amila. You must be so, so proud of yourselves. Um, you've all come a very long way since our first day in business model design together. And just think about it. Two years later, you're winning the Shark Tank. So that's great news. Um, well deserved. So tell me, what are you going to be your next steps with College App? You ready? Yeah, this summer we're actually going to work with Professional Coding to finish our app and make sure that it's ready to go onto the market. And then we are also going to give a six free month trial to three different schools so that they can test out our app. And then we'll get feedback from them and put it into our app so that we can launch it to the public. And That's also, great. like three fourths of us are majoring in business. So we're going to have great resources when we're actually at our colleges. So I think that'll definitely help when we're working on the app. And we're going to be able to like talk to our teachers and advisors like around us to see like their opinions and thoughts on how we execute this. Like, yeah, and kind of following up with Amila, we will be going to college this fall and we definitely want to take it there. Also, um, I think we're all most likely going to be in different states. So that will be another opportunity for expansion um, just locally around our colleges, finding different high schools and things like that, that we may possibly want to reach out to to um, use our app. Well, congratulations again. You are all wonderful role models for future entrepreneur students coming through the program. 
Really, I'm really proud of, of, of the work that you guys did. I think the app is amazing. I have a question. Given the unique circumstances of this year with the COVID-19 pandemic, what was uh, maybe a related challenge to that that you faced and how did you overcome that? I think the hardest challenge would definitely just be not all of us being in person the whole time. Um, we're good friends and have been outside of school before this competition. So that definitely worked in our favor. But um, I could tell like even for other teams and our, for our team as well, not everyone was here together. So we weren't able to always get everything we needed to be done or we had to work really hard in order to make sure everyone was on the same page because sometimes there were things that were discussed in person, but it may have fell through for someone online. So we had to work extra hard to make sure that everyone was on the same page at the same time and knew all that was going on. That's great. So once again, congratulations. And now let's go back to the live ending of the 2021 Bullish Shark Tank. What an amazing group of students and startups. From everyone here at Bullis, congratulations to all of these students. We can't wait to see what you accomplish. We hope you'll join us next year for the 2022 Entrepreneurship Symposium. Stay safe and stay healthy. Um, and some of them are tackling real problems and I wouldn't even begin to know how to start and put pen to paper. So they, yeah. they're fabulous. Bullish Shark Tank.